Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. The Healing Through Love podcast with host Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson would love to acknowledge Global Glamping Charities Incorporated for generously supporting this podcast. Global Glamping Charities, solving homelessness in all of its forms. Reach out to them at globalglamping.org. The Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 53, Precious Stepney shares with us how we can use yoga to relieve the trauma symptoms in our bodies. What happens in yin yoga is that it allows the, 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 the stretches allow the fascia, right? The muscles, the tendons to actually begin to stretch just a little bit. So even in, let's say, a cat-cow, Right. So in cat cow, you're on your hands, you're on your knees um, and then you're you're moving and you're flexing and how that connects to trauma. We know. Right. We know um, trauma is stored in the body. Right. It, it becomes a part of us and taking the opportunity to talk about our trauma is one way of releasing um, allowing our body to stretch and acknowledging what comes up through journaling. Um, could be another way of releasing or even taking whatever comes up and making a creative outlet, you know, is another way of, of getting it out of the body. Because also the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. The Healing Through Love podcast is here to empower survivors of family and domestic violence and bring them a soft place to land by uh, having our guests share their journeys and share their skills and knowledge around how you can help yourself to become the person that you're meant to be. And as other than the podcast, we also hold annual pamper days for uh, victim survivors of domestic and family violence. These are free events where business owners come together and share their resources and and knowledge for the day with our uh, with our attendees, um, and so that the attendees can have a, a joyous day of love and nurturing. Uh, if you want to reach out and become uh, and want to know more about our Pamper Day events, which we are hoping to hold on a global basis, uh, you can reach out to hello at htlaustralia.org. And uh, Australia is spelled A-U-S-T-R-A-L-I-A. My guest today is Yakira Eden, and we're going to be discussing all things yoga, leadership and meditation now, Yakira Eden, she's going to explore with us the mental fog and how we can overcome this through um, yoga and activities that support our remembering and the gathering of our pieces together so that we become a whole. She's also the uh, author of Spiritual Guide to Overcoming Seven Mental Ailments, which is available on Amazon. She's also the... Um, author of Lean Six Sigma Black Belt. I oh, know she... Yeah. So uses this and other strategies to assist with leadership development, life coaching and personal wellness and True Health Life podcast co-host. And she's a yoga enthusiast who lives to share on all things that these talk about all the topics that we're going to discuss today and a lot more. Yeah, Kerry Eden, thank you so much for joining me today. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Oh, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. 
So what brought you on your journey of, you know, um, yoga and spiritual enlightenment? Absolutely. So I'll say that um, my career, well, I spent about 25, 26 years in the behavioral health setting in the United States and New York. And during that time, just as a support mechanism, you tend to pull on different modalities. And the one that um, that I would often lean to and then eventually really began to focus on was um, stretching, right? So I know we, we may think of yoga and think of all of the different modalities and the different type of yoga that is available, but ultimately um, it, it is really just being able to, to stretch the body um, in order to allow our mind to, to also expand and stretch. Um, my, my experience, and so I know you touched on the Lean uh, Six Sigma Black Belt. Um, I did not author that. So in fact, the Lean Six Sigma Black Belt is a manufacturing tool. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a Toyota. It started uh, in, the, in the manufacturing industry, but it shifted into banking and um, healthcare as a means by which to ensure that you're error proofing and creating um, as few redundancies as possible. Um, but what I found is that in, woven within those techniques were actually life hacks um, that if we implemented could actually help improve outcomes even within the home or navigating our, our schedule or even you know keeping a level of mental clarity. Um, so I, I function, my last role in the healthcare setting was as a CEO of a psychiatric hospital, which was extremely rewarding. Um, but it was also, uh, very challenging because it made very clear to me the, there was a, a huge work-life imbalance that caused a lot of stress and angst, um, for myself. And so I had the opportunity or, or, or was instructed to, you know, consider how I could make a transition. And, and I, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, yoga is, you know, thought to be something for, you know, trendy um, upper class um, millennials, you know. Um, so, you know, what types of, do you have to be very limber to, um, you know, undertake yoga or it, does it help you become more, more, more stretchy? Right. Right. Um, so it's so interesting that you say that. Yes. Yoga is kind of synonymous with a particular type of person. Um, I think sometimes, um, but yoga um, or just the the ability to to stretch one's body is not new, right? It's something mm. that we I yeah it, we can look on the the walls when if we travel um, through any indigenous place and you will see stretching and movement happening on those walls. Um, as far as the need to be limber, no. What, what all you have to do is be willing, be willing to see where your body is currently. So and and although we're talking about yoga, I want I want to just conjure an image of simply sitting, right? Simply sitting with your legs <clears throat> directly out in front of you. It can be as simple as making the commitment to sit where your tailbone is directly connected to the floor and your legs are just stretched out in front of you, where you're engaging every part of your body in sitting. Um, that doesn't require a lot of stretching, but it will help you recognize where your shoulders are in proximity to your core, right? And how your hip flexors feel in that moment, um, even down to extending your toes and engaging them, recognizing that they're even there. Um, and maybe being able to say, you know what, there, there's a lot of tension in my lower back. What what, what might that be? Um, and just giving yourself the time to sit in your body, if you will. So yes, we can get into, you know, elaborate uh, stretches <laughs> or asana, if you will, but it doesn't have to be that that complicated at all. It can be really simple. Mm. So I guess 
uh, you know, as far as people who've come a, a, a through a trauma, you know, as domestic violence or family violence for that matter, um, you know, how can they use yoga to, uh, you know, stretch their mind and, and you know, find that inner peace? Sure. So it, that's actually exactly what I cover in, in my book, um, Scriptural Guide to Overcoming Seven Mental Ailments. Um, I walk you through a series of different challenges that we all face. Um, and that's the thing. Although my background is is mental health, um, mental ailments, right? Things like angst and worry and fear um, and mental fog, those are much more common. Um, they're not clinical diagnoses. And, and as such, they're oftentimes much more pervasive as well. Um, we don't necessarily go around sharing how fearful we are just to get things done. The, the narrative of, no, I'll, I'll definitely fail. I'll do this podcast and I'm going to not have the answer. I will not <laughs> seem like an expert. And why bother? Right. So why why do it? Um, and when we push past that. Right. So if I sit with that and well, let, let's choose the first. So we sit with it and we we accept that. I accept that. And I cancel. I don't show up for the podcast or whatever the experience is. Um, and then I, I they're not right because there was all this worry. And <clears throat> now that's going to now carry through my day. So now I, I might feel guilty because I've stood you up <laughs> and didn't show up for my commitment. Um, and that cycle continues. So what you can't, well, one, the type of yoga that I thoroughly enjoy is yin yoga. And um, when I was looking into modalities of yoga to explore, I actually had not heard of yin yoga. I've not um, heard of it either. I Oh, so yeah, wonderful. So I get to share a bit. So as we know, there, there is that duality of yin and yang, right? That those two energy forces and yin, oh, well, I'll start with yang. Yang is more active. That's the masculine force, right? That's the light or the white side of, of the yin yang. And yin, which is more internal or more feminine, um, it's a slower uh type of cooler even, right? Because we know yang is that heat or fire um, energy. And so what I do, so if you think of hatha yoga or even like doing sun salutations, that is all yang energy. So it warms the body up. You're constantly moving in and out of asanas. Um, and you you tend to build a bit more muscle if you're very committed to, to that journey. Uh, but in yin yoga, it is much slower. So in my book, we actually, I, I introduce a few yin stretches and you hold those positions for three to 10 minutes. Now that may seem <laughs> like a lot, but what I will, what I will say is it is not. What happens in yin yoga is that it allows the, 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 the stretches allow the fascia, right? The muscles, the tendons to actually begin to stretch just a little bit. So even, let's see. So if we're, I'm, I'm thinking of a, I'm thinking, so even in, let's say a cat cow, right? So in cat cow, you're on your hands, you're on your knees, um, and then you're, you're moving and you're flexing. In cat cow, You'll, you'll keep that position. So, but instead of constantly shifting in from cat into cow, you'll actually do it much slower and much more intentionally, really acknowledging the stretch and the movement. And what you'll find is as you do it, the, the, the slower you are, the more deep the stretch will become and your range of motion increases as well. Um, and how that connects to trauma, we know, right? We know um, trauma is stored in the body, right? It, it becomes a part of us. And taking the opportunity to talk about our trauma is one way of releasing, um, allowing our body to stretch and acknowledging what comes up through journaling, 
um, could be another way of releasing or even taking whatever comes up and making a creative outlet, you know, is another way of, of getting it out of the body because ultimately that's what we want, right? We want to expel what should not be there anyway. Absolutely, yes. And, and uh, you know, as, as someone who's lived through, you know, tra traumatic childhood experiences, I can vouch for, you know, various parts of my body are, are still holding on to the pain and the trauma. And uh, it's quite difficult to get rid of, uh, especially if I'm under a little bit of stress um, at the time, um, you know, whether it be financial stress or family worries or or whatever it is, but yeah, I, I do notice parts of my body get uh, very sore, and I find it difficult to move. And it's like, I mean, I'm only, you know, early sixties, but I feel sometimes like I'm, you know, eighty because you know my body just won't move the way I want it to. It's very frustrating. So I I get that, and uh, yeah, so, um, you know, people who say that, that trauma isn't stored in the body, I think. Um, I don't think they know what they're talking about or they haven't had a traumatic experience in their life. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so, I, I... so what other, sorry, what other precious, what other techniques can, you know, people use to um, relax the mind and come into one? Sure. Um, I Having a daily routine, I think, is really, really essential. Um, I'll share a bit of what I found um, really, really helpful. So waking up in the in the dawning and setting an expectation for your day. Um, I practice something called commanding my day. So oftentimes we know what the world expects of us, right? So our employer expects us to be at a particular place at a specified time. We may have children to drop to school and that all is based on a schedule. Um, we may, we may prioritize ourselves, right? We may work out in, in the morning, in the dawning. Um, but waking up early enough to allow for even 20, 30 minutes to just sit quietly um, and offer gratitude or affirmation, um, acknowledging whatever, you know, whatever your spiritual indoctrination has you acknowledge for the day. And then saying, okay, what do I want to get done today? What, you know, what do I want to do as far as my personal development today? And it could be, you know what? I have 30 minutes where I sit in traffic. So I'm going to listen to a particular podcast or I'm going to listen to a, a book and just, or, you know, what was that yin yoga thing? Let me, let me listen to something talking about that. Um, so that's one thing that we can do. Uh, oftentimes sitting in meditation, even if it's just for a few minutes and not necessarily thinking that your mind is going to be quiet because that is not always possible, right? Um, and for some, it's, it's never going to be possible, but you can find something that allows your conscious mind to not impede that subconscious. So for some, it may be dancing, for others, it could be pottery. Um, acknowledge what that special thing is that helps you get out of your active mind um, and commit to doing it, even if it's one time per week. And But do it intentionally. So do it and then recognize that, you know, I'm going to keep my journal close or I'll have my phone. And if a thought comes up or a feeling comes up, um, I'm going to just record and acknowledge that. Because oftentimes... I would say much like our children, um, the, the, the things that sit with us really just want to be acknowledged. This is happening right now. I am a little nervous right now. Well, what are, what are we nervous about? And just kind of pull that thread, you know, ask yourself those, those, the, the five whys, right? Well, well, why is that? And just see what comes up. And, and write very freely, you know, without judgment, just kind of free write. And maybe you want to go back and read it. Maybe you don't have to go back and read it. It's really up to you. But those are just a few, a few strategies that we can use to, um, to open ourselves up a bit more. Yeah. And, and quite often when we've been through trauma, we, 
we tend to shut our mind off and uh, and the subconscious never is never quiet so we find you know traumatic experiences popping up for no reason you know conversations actions uh, you know come pop up out of nowhere and so having those quiet times where you can actually still the, the subconscious as well and just tell it to go back in its box for a little while and don't bother me you know is always a good practice but you, you're right you need to deal with it you need to find out why it's popped up so what's triggered that particular memory or emotion and and figure it out because that's a, a way of um doing the inner work isn't it for you know self-growth and and peace of mind really yeah absolutely um I, you know, whenever we think about, um, you mentioned peace of mind, just the idea of getting out into nature, right? How, how, no matter the weather, no matter, you know, if, if you have to bundle up um, that experience, the, the cold, right? The experience of the cold or whether you can, you know, it's warmer where you are, um, getting outside into nature and from a gratitude perspective, like keeping a gratitude journal, being able to acknowledge the thing that you are grateful for, whether it's for the day or in that moment. Um, oftentimes I know you can get really overwhelmed just in day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and you want to be alone, but then you really don't, <laughs> you know, then you can, you feel a little lonely. So what I find is going out into nature and sitting, you get to experience all of what is around you. And there's actually an exercise in the book where it's, it's actually touching on the idea of, of being alone versus lonely. And, you know, the charges, I, I want you to set the intention of being alone, but go into nature and recognize, just sit and, and acknowledge how many birds, how many, you know, how many butterflies come to visit you observe just the abundance that is around um, and then consider how we ever really can be alone, right? When we're feeling lonely or, or kind of desolate, um, there are always opportunities to connect. And if we choose to accept those opportunities, then we get to experience um, love, right? Because love is, is a connection. And, and that's ultimately what we all would like to have, right? That's a part of this human experience. So being able to connect in nature helps us see how we can connect with one another um, much more organically than social media may tell us, right? Mm. That there's no script for just smiling <laughs> and, and, and greeting someone. They're like, there's nothing... You know, you don't need a hashtag for that. You can, we can just do it and maintain a human connection that way. Yeah, I love to sit out in the, out in nature and the smells is just divine. You know, here in Australia, we have eucalypt trees and the smell of them and mix in with the pine trees is, and moss and, you know, the river and, oh my God, it's just so, so amazing. <laughs> I that love sounds, it. Did you say little, eucalypt Trees. that's amazing yeah the, and um you know the, the little stream and just hearing it stream bubbling away it's amazing I, I love it I think it's such a magical place um and uh you know you, I, you just sometimes I just never want to leave there I think it's so nice it's just mm. leave the world behind and just stay there <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 we find our oasis sometimes in nature and it's like okay I can just be here for hours <laughs> absolutely yeah it's absolutely gorgeous precious um sorry Yakira Eden I should say um sure. <laughs> uh, what else can we do um as humans to you know help us connect to others especially if we've been through some you know traumatic experience yeah, I think just being open is something that we can do. Oftentimes, one, we we don't create opportunities to even connect. Um, mm -hmm. So one thing that we can all do is 
identify what our passions are and connect with others that that share a similar interest. Um, sometimes you don't recognize that, that those are the bridges that that kind of get us to one another. Um, if you're interested, I, I know I have a I love pottery. I didn't know that I was creative and <laughs> would love pottery, but being able to go to different potting st pottery studios and interact with other people, um, I get to have different experiences. I would say also if you have a, um, a spiritual community, being able to connect and, and volunteer yourself even um, is often a great way of connecting with others. Um, but really just getting out, right? Getting out physically, it helps us to get out of our head um, because often our thoughts, right? We know our thoughts become the reality around us. So if we're able to get out and engage with others more, um, it, it, it creates more plasticity, right? So we're not as stuck or as stagnant and therefore we recognize, you know, I know I, I can't go sit and talk to my neighbor. I wave, but I never actually walk across the street and just sit down for a moment um, to even discover all that we have in common or what led us to this community, right? And in community, it's like common is in there, but we never acknowledge something brought us together. <laughs> something all led us to this particular location at, in this time of our lives though we may look different, what, what, what were those things? Let's, let's figure that out so that we can connect. Um, so that, you know, the, the millennial can, uh, can share yoga techniques that actually work, um, for, you know, for someone who may think, no, that that's not a thing for, for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really just getting out, I would say. In Absolutely. Yeah. Connection is one of the greatest things that we can do and, and closing yourself off uh, really is doing you more harm than it is good and you know you've got to overcome that fear of of leaving your sanctuary and and uh, venturing out into the world um, because you never know what you might find out there you could find some some very pleasant surprise absolutely. yes mm. absolutely yeah. precious see uh, sorry I, I love the name so <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Where can you. uh, so your books on Amazon and you've um where else can they find the book? Sure, so you can find the book on Amazon. Um, I there's also a Kindle edition, so if you have um Kindle Unlimited, you can access the book for free. Uh, presently, that is where you can find the book. So it's Scriptural Guide to Overcoming Seven Mental Ailments. And like I said, it's it's not we we delve into scripture, but I also identify remembered activities or activities to help us remember, right? So re hyphen member, pull the parts, and you said it earlier in your opening, pull the parts of us back together again. Often we become so disjointed and disconnected. Um, as as you touched on, you know, you can feel tension and knots in certain parts of the body. And not really recognize or fully um, identify, how did this get here? Why, why is it here? Um, why am I able to get a massage and have it go away and then it comes right back? Um, and in the remembered exercises, we really go through um, lots of journaling, also some breathing or pranayama techniques that can help you settle into the body. So there's stretching, there's activities for how you can engage in your community as well as scripture. So, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So go over and head over and find um, her book and I'm sure it will be an absolute bonus for people who are looking for ways to uh, get out of their one, not the oneness, but, you know, the, the, the isolation that they may be feeling themselves in at the moment. Precious, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've loved meeting you and chatting with you. Thank you for having me. This is lovely. Bye-bye for now. All righty, bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us 
via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Thank you.